we want to hold people accountable, but we don't want to hold ourselves or the person that we're supposed to be in love with accountable for anything. How does that work? Alright you guys, this is your boy Scott and we're here for another review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 11, Episode 11. What's going on you guys? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pick up where we left off last week, which is the whole annoying ass Candy versus Portia situation. Now listen, I'm really getting tired of this whole Josephine, Johnny, Bunny Hop dance that they keep on doing. Either they're going to be cool or they're not going to be cool. You know what I mean? It's going to be one or the other. Either you're going to be cool or you're not or you're just going to be cordial. It's going to be one or the other. Because I'm really getting sick of it, honestly. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of both of them. More so Portia because I just don't, I just detest her. And it's just, it is what it is. But all I'm going to say is this. You know, we watch the show. And we saw the after show reviews. Now, what I get from this whole little situation is that Portia's story did kind of change looking back. Because she said that she was thrown out by security. But then on the after show, she said her and Dennis walked out. And Lauren said that she was kicked out. So, was you kicked out or was Lauren the fuck kicked out? Which one was it? And not to mention... When you really look down, when you really, when it all boils down to this whole who got kicked out situation and who should have reached out to who situation, at the end of the day, both of them were wrong. And I'm going to tell you why I think both of them were wrong and where both of them least to hold themselves accountable at. Point blank, because both of them are not blameless. Portia is not fucking blameless, okay? So y'all can really miss me with it. This is what I, this is what I believe now. According to Portia's story, she said that when she was up in that party, Jamie and the ex-girlfriend Sherry walked into the party. She said that they, they walked up to um to Dennis and Sherry kissed Dennis on the cheek. And, you know, apparently they were circling around her and Portia asked them what, what was going on. They walked off and Portia walked behind them asking them, so what's up? What's going on? What's up? Now, if they walked away, what the fuck is the point of you walking right behind them? But I'm not judging because if I was in that particular situation and, you know, somebody was doing some bitch ass, messy ass bullshit in front of me. And then when I ask them what's up and they don't say nothing and they try to walk off on me like, no, nah, don't try to walk away. Say what the fuck you got to say. Yeah, I do get that. But that wasn't the time of the place to do that. So that's where you go wrong at. And that's the, probably the reason why you got kicked out. And that's why it's made to look like you were the aggressor just because of the fact that. A bitch did some messy ass shit towards you and when you were trying to get to the bottom of it, the bitch walked off and you walked behind her saying, nah, bitch, don't walk off. You know, let me know what's up. That's what happened. But that's what you were wrong at. That wasn't the time nor the place to be chasing up behind somebody asking them what's up. You did admit to walking behind the girl. You did admit that. Now, I'm not saying you ran. I ain't saying you chased. But you did say that you walked behind the girl. You walked, you went after her after she walked off. You did say that. So that's where you were wrong at. Where Candy was wrong at was not trying to hear it. Candy's only issue is the fact that she was one-sided about the situation. She only heard one side of the motherfucking story. She wasn't trying to hear you. The only reason why she wasn't trying to hear you is because you got to keep in mind... Um, these people in her team are her motherfucking friends. And due to the history of said team and Portia, the difference is Portia has lied on her and did all sorts of dirty ass shit to her. So, of course, that's going to be the last person she believes. But when it comes down to her team, they never failed her. They never did nothing. They never did a greasy. They never did nothing like the shit that Portia and Phaedra did. So, of course, she's going to take the side of them. 
But when you got two different sides of the story and you really wasn't there to see it, there's really no other way to do it besides ask Portia what happened, try to rectify the situation, apologize for the oversight, and just keep it the fuck moving. That's it. That's all you can do. But at the end of it all, well, we all have to understand, and I think at some point Candy will have to be honest with herself when it comes down to this. Because of everything that Portia did with the whole dungeon gate, drug gate bullshit, with the whole... You and your husband were trying to drug me and take me home to your sex dungeon and you was fucking a Mary. You was um you was dating a woman for years and um Ty was talking about he was marveling like told all the motherfucking lies from a third party and all of that stuff. You gotta admit that Portia did all of that and now she wants to turn around and just you know, which is nothing wrong with turning over a new leaf and trying to redeem yourself. There's really nothing wrong with it. But just looking at the looking at the situation, it's difficult for them to really be friends again and really be cool like that again with that type of history, that type of hurt, all of that stuff that happened. It's easier for the person that did the shit to move on. It's easy for Portia to move on. There's nothing for her to move on from. Because she's the one that hurt the person. So a lot of the times we're always coming down on a person that was hurt by a situation. We're always coming down on a person that may be holding a, a small grudge against the person. But sometimes some things are so big to a person that it's going to take some time. And that's not on Portia. She did what she did. She apologized whether I feel like she was sincere about it or not. Because to this day I still don't feel like she was. But that's just my opinion. It's up to Candy to really own up to the fact that bitch you ain't gotten over it yet. It, it, that's just what it is. And, this, it, and if you haven't gotten over it yet, it's okay to say you haven't gotten over it yet. But don't say you're trying to turn over a new leaf. And don't say you're trying to move forward when at the same time you throwing shade. You're talking about her man on every motherfucking scene and you're doing this. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't disguise you know, yo, T, like you really want to be cool with this girl again and you really want to try again. Well, you already know that you don't want to fuck with her again. And then you know what I'm saying? You really made that known when Portia went in the house and everybody was talking to you. And then you was like, well, you know, she made it easier for me. I really don't want to fuck with her. You didn't want to fuck with her to, for, from the beginning. What you really did was you tried to just be cordial with her to pacify everybody else. And that's the problem. You can't pacify everybody else. You cannot fake the funk with people. And at the end of the day, that's what you were doing. You were faking the funk with them. You were faking the funk with Portia. And you were faking the funk with your damn self. Because you know that you don't fuck with that girl. And at the end of the day, you got every right not to want to fuck with her. Because let me just be real with you guys. It's a lot of things that I can forgive and forget. And there's a lot of things that I can forgive, but I would never forget. And that's just what it is. And this is why when it comes down to Candy and Phaedra and Candy and Portia, I am going to always... Be team candy. Always team candy when it comes down to that. With, 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 with them too. It's always going to be team candy. Point blank. You can be mad if you want to. But like all this shit that they did. Whatever they get is what they deserve. But I'm going to call out what's right. And I'm going to call out what's wrong. And I think that they were both wrong in a sense. They both did something fucked up. Portia was in the moment when the shit happened with her man, but at the same time, that's not Candy fault that the girl walked up to her man. Dennis had no business texting that woman. So your misplaced anger that you're blasting out, that you're unleashing on Candy right now, you need to be trying to um send that over there to Dennis. That's that's who you need to be unleashing this shit on. So it is what it is. So both of them are done with it. They're over each other. They don't want to talk around each other. They're done. So as they're getting ready to go to the hibachi room and all that stuff, they're watching the man cook the food and everything like that. Next thing you know, everybody go outside. But Shamara was like, you know what, fuck that. I'm just going to sit up here and eat because I'm motherfucking hungry. I came in for the motherfucking food. I ain't come for the other bullshit. And to be honest, this is why I like Shamari ass. Because at the end of the day, when I'm here for the motherfucking food, I'm here for the motherfucking food, bitch. I'm not here for this bullshit y'all going on. Some bullshit that I could care less about. Bitch, we here to eat and that's what we here to do, okay? We, we here to eat and fuck some shit up. That's what we here to do. Then, 
They go outside, you know, Portia was like, girl, what the fuck you was doing? And, and you know, she said, I was eating shit. I was fucking hungry. And Portia was like, well, damn, I should have been down there eating. I'm the one that's pregnant, blah, 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 blah. Well, you better get with Shamara because that bitch was ready to eat. And I don't blame her here. Y'all bitches out here arguing and shit. I'm ready to argue with this plate. That's what I'm ready to do. So then, you know, Eva, no, T T Tanya said that there were some things that were brought to her attention in regards to her comment about I'm um, starting off small. Eva called out the shade and T Tanya apologized to Nene if she took it the wrong way. Me personally, I don't think Tanya owed Nene a motherfucking thing, okay? Because at the end of the day, Nene is just a jealous hearted bitch that don't want to see nobody else have anything more than her. She don't want to see nobody win but her. Don't nobody supposed to have anything but her. That's just what it is. And I just think that that's fucked up. And that's just the type of person she is. She's just jealous as fuck. Another Nicki Minaj. Just jealous as a motherfucker. But you know, they are Sagittarius. They are Sagittarius. And a lot of them do that. But, you know what I'm saying. That's just what she do. I don't feel like Tanya owe her a motherfucking thing. Needy just jealous of that girl. And that's just what it is. But then, after Eva put, puts the shade out there, Portia decides that she finna be messy. And put her on blast about you can call out. It's funny how you picked up on that shade, but you always forget your shade. Now, that's a true statement. But it's quite funny as to who it came from. You know what I'm saying? But then when she was like, have you ever been shaded to Cynthia? So now she wants to sit up here and put Eva on blast. For shading Cynthia. The same shade that you were sitting at the gym laughing at. So you want to laugh at the shade. But you want to put her on blast for the same shade that you was laughing at. Like. This is what I'm saying. Like. And nobody had nothing to say about Portia dumbass being messy in that moment. Like, what the fuck was that to say? Now, if that was Candy doing that shit, y'all would have been, Uh, I'm ready for this bitch to be a show. Uh, I'm sick of this fat bitch. Uh, I wish she would go somewhere and sit down and stop talking about Portia. Uh, I wish this bitch would go find her something to eat. Uh, I I'm just sick of seeing her. But ain't nobody say nothing about this bitch being messy. Now, if any one of them other bitches did that, y'all would have been ready to drag. But... Like, girl, you were sitting there laughing at the shade yourself. So what the fuck is it? What's the fuck is the point of you bringing it up now? And you want to tell somebody to be accountable and do this and do that? Girl, like, accountability should be the last thing that come out of your mouth. Victim should be the first word to come out of your mouth. But accountability should be the last word. Or that word should never make your list of words, period. Real talk. She killed me with this shit. Like, you want to call her out for the same shade you laughed at, but you want to also call her out for accountability, which is something that has always been hard for you to take. Girl. Bye. But after all of that, Eva and Tanya announced that, you know, Tanya, Eva felt some kind of way because she felt like she hurt Nene's feelings and the other girl's feelings by not inviting them to her bachelorette party. So what she gonna do is take them all to Tokyo as a way to apologize. Eva is so up motherfucking Nene's ass that it don't make no sense. I hope her ass smell like straight up motherfucking diarrhea. That's what I hope it smell like since she up her ass so much. So funny to me. Um, so, you know, Candy has decided to Take what happened with the whole sex dungeon thing and take, you know, take the negativity and make it into a coin. And one thing about Candy that I do respect and admire is that she can um, take a negative situation to make it make it something positive. And she's going to throw a dungeon party. It's going to be like a sexy party. You know, Shamara going to be performing and dancing and stuff and you know it looked like it was a good time because I saw a lot of celebrities there this summer and all of that stuff so that looked like it was pretty good um, watching them look for the clothes and shit and Candy act like she ain't you know being cheap at the damn store like she can't afford it. Bitch you got that bank don't act like you don't but you know I know how you feel though. So Portia has a therapy session with Dr. Sherry about um, where she is in life at this point, you know, she um, went to Dr. Sherry um, before when she was married to Cordelia. She went while she was single, you know what I'm saying? And now she's going now. Um, and now that she's in a relationship, 
with Jermaine Dupri and that she's pregnant by him now. And so it's like right about now, she's happy, but she's been so used to being by herself that she doesn't really know how to handle being with someone else or sharing her life with somebody else. And she doesn't want to lose Portia. And I think that I related to her so much on that because as of right now, as you guys been new for months now, I'm single. I'm not in a relationship right now. And I'm very afraid to get into a relationship now because I've been alone for so long and I've been in certain situations where I was dating people, you know, but it didn't work out or I was just having a little bit of fun with people, you know, going out on dates, having sex every now and then, whatever. But, um, you know, I just been alone for a long time. And, I, and, you know, I know what it's like to not want to lose yourself. Like, you don't want to be so consumed and wrapped up. Like, I, I don't know if Portia's saying the same thing. But for me, I don't want to be consumed and only wrapped up like a damn taco into one thing, into one person. You know, I know you have to share your life with a person. But I don't want to just be in relationship mode like every minute of my day like I have a life I have a family life I got friends I have work I got this I got hobbies I got other things to do besides you know being all up under some man all the time that's just really how I feel and that's probably why I'm single and probably gonna stay like that for a while because I'm just not ready for a relationship at this moment because I just feel like I'm going to lose myself. You know, sometimes people do lose themselves in relationships and then you find yourself pushing people away, which is what um, I've done in the past. I pushed people away that I knew that was good for me, but I felt like it wasn't going to work or I just felt like I'm losing me. It's all about them and not me, you know, so we all have had those moments. So I related to Portia on that. But one thing I will say in regards to her relationship with JD is she's not, I think that the problem is that she wasn't asking the questions that she needed to ask at the very beginning. Because at this point, they've been, they've been on and off, for, at this point on and off for like five or six months and she's already pregnant by him. And there's a lot of things about him that she did not know. And then you hearing things from a third party and you, you know, yada, yada, yada. So it's like you don't really know this man, but you're getting to know him and you're having a baby by a man that you don't really know like that. You know him. You fuck with him, but you don't really know him. And I feel like it takes more than six months to really know somebody. So now you're at a crossroads at the five or six month mark that, you know, do I really know this man? Like, what's really going on here, you know? So, yeah, she, you know, that, that really opened up my eyes a lot to her relationship. I just feel like she really don't know him yet. So, you know, and they've been moving really quickly. And that's the problem, to be honest. They've been moving too fast. So then later on, she talks to Dennis about the dinner with Candy and how she went off on her about, you know, what happened. My thing is that Dennis is suspect to me. And I ain't talking about I'm thinking that he gay. I just feel like Jermaine Dupri Jr. is just not right. And I don't think that he's telling the full story. And I don't think that he's really telling the truth. But you know him and Portia got that in common. So they probably do deserve each other. But at the same time, it's like... He and Portia want to point the finger at Candy and make this all about her when it's not about her. It's really about Dennis and what the fuck he was doing. Dennis wasn't completely honest with Portia about what he was doing. They both had their own situationships going on while they were together. But Portia and him said that they would stop talking to certain people. Portia stopped talking to her people. Dennis never stopped talking to her people. So... It, it only made sense as to why old girl felt like she could just walk up to him like she wanted to. You know what I mean? And you know what I'm saying? You know, I just feel like he, he was saying, well, I just feel like she was being messy due to um, 
a situation with someone that you got issues with and blah 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 don't make this about Ken because it ain't about her it's about you you were still texting this bra you were still talking to this bra while you was talking to Portia just own up to the fact that you were wrong and you were still in contact with her and you just wasn't expecting the relationship to fly the way that it has. Just take accountability for it. Accountability is a word that I've been using a lot in this review and it really applies to these two. Like Portia, in my opinion, has never really taken accountability for a lot of stuff she did. Now, there may be some things that she did take accountability for, but there's some things that I always felt like she's never taken full accountability for. Dennis ain't taking no accountability for shit. He ain't even admitting to the fact that, okay, he just saying that he was wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. You did do something wrong. You were still texting the bitch. Portia wasn't texting nobody. And if Portia was still texting somebody, you wouldn't have a problem with that. So, just stop texting other bitches and you won't have this motherfucking problem. But it is what it is. That's their relationship. That's her baby. And that is her spicy hot pickle that she's sucking on in the damn episode. But with that being said, y'all, this is my review on The Housewives. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe and share this video. And, you know, follow me on all social media. All my social media is at the bottom. And let's have a civilized conversation about tonight's episode. And I'm out of here to my Married to Medicine review. And um, my new um, astrology segment, which I filmed Friday. I did film it already Friday. You'll be seeing it on either Tuesday or Wednesday. And I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.